Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do my wrap up. So I have read 10 books this month and it has been a pretty good reading month. At first it started a little slow, a little rocky, but it gradually got better. So we're going to start with the first one that I read, which was Heartless by Elsie Silver. This is the second one in the series and this is the most loved book in her series. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I don't understand why this is everyone's favorite in the series. I didn't see it. I really didn't. So for me personally, I do not like for the physical attraction to the, be the main focus in the book. I think there needs to be depth. I think there needs to be other things in the relationship to root for. And if there's not, then the relationship isn't believable to me. I didn't believe that they loved each other. I didn't believe their connection. I really didn't. I'm not really sure why this is a favorite of everyone's and I'm sorry that I'm probably gonna upset some people, but it's true. It was a three star for me. It was just okay. It was okay. I just think that if they, so it ended pretty great, it did. At the end, there was some depth. There was some emotion. There was some, just some things that really added layers to their relationship but for the first I would say 300 pages that wasn't there it was so focused on the physical attraction and it was more lust driven and so for me I just can't root for that I really just can't and so I didn't love it until about like 300 pages in I think it's like yeah 300 pages in I started to finally enjoy their relationship and that is just way too long for me so it was a solid three stars for me and this is following Cade in the family and he has the dad he has a son and Willa who is kind of like very fiery and spunky and she just kind of is not really so much of a rule follower she likes to stir the pot a little bit but more so just because she doesn't like to be told no she is very headstrong but in this book she really does do a great job of really just taking care of his son and being loving and fun for him and so those aspects i really did enjoy i just did not love the relationship itself so the next book that I read was Terms and Conditions, and this book is the second book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. I love this book. When I tell you guys that I was quite literally freaking out over this book, I mean, I was like up super late, finished this book, texting my best friend, telling her how much I loved it. I'm like, freaking out in my review. I don't even know like how to write words to adequately describe this book, but it was just everything I wanted in a relationship. And it is sort of like friends to lovers, but it's also enemies to lovers. I know that doesn't make sense, but it sort of works. If you read it, you'll understand. But he is very, very cold and angry and not the type of person that you would root for for someone to be with and she is very sweet and just supportive and just always there for him in every single way and it turns out to be an arranged marriage and then from there things just really develop i love the arranged marriage trope i really really do so then of course there's forced proximity but I just loved getting to see his development as a person. He really just softened and grew to become more of a likable character. At first you kind of just hate him, but then throughout he really just grows and learns. 
and I can't remember each of their names. I'm really sorry. It's been a while because that was the beginning of the month. Super bad with remembering character names, but just know that it is such a good read. And if you didn't like the fine print, I encourage you to still read this one because I did not like the fine print. I gave it two stars. I really hated it. I felt like the spice was disgusting and I just had to skip through it. And I just really did not like that story for those reasons. I, I just, I also just didn't think the relationship was very believable. With this one, what I love about it is the spice really takes the back, like their love and their connection and their relationship development takes the forefront in this book and they really just develop a love for each other and the physical attraction is really in the back and that is what I love the most in romance stories, what I loved about this story and they were married and still it just grew and flourished and it was just a beautiful, beautiful romance story. I highly recommend it. Five stars all the way, without a doubt. I love that book. The next book I read was The Secret Book and Scone Society. Don't come at me because I know some of you who are watching this love that book, but I did not. I gave it two stars. I want to preface with saying I went into this book thinking this was going to read like a cozy mystery, be light and fluffy and funny, and it was not that at all. It's more like a literary fiction, maybe cozy mystery as like a background secondary option, like but more so I would say it's a literary fiction. I did not get the cozy vibes. I felt like it was really deep. I felt like it was dark. I felt like it was emotional and that might be what you're looking for. And if that is the case, then go ahead and try this one out. But for me, I went in with the wrong expectations and it really just ruined my experience with this book. There is some cringe scenes in there that I don't believe belong in a cozy mystery. So, Go in it with knowing all of the trigger warnings and being prepared for a deeper read, not a light read. The next book that I read was, drum roll please, Spark of the Everflame. This book, guys, this book, I finally understand what all the hype is about. This book is so good. This book is so good. It is everything I was needing in that moment. I went into this kind of with lower expectations because sometimes I'm a little bit hesitant when a book is so overhyped. I'm so worried about being disappointed. So I kind of went in, I feel like with realistic expectations. I was also coming off a book I really just didn't enjoy. And so I just was like, I need a fantasy read. I need a genre that I love. And so I went into this and let me just tell you that it was everything I needed in that moment. It has action, it has drama, it has like enemies to lovers, it has different classes of people. So there's people, there's descendants, and the descendants are the royal family, and she is a healer, and she is going in as a healer, and it starts out because she's trying to figure out what happened to her mom, and she goes in as a healer and doing kind of the job that her mom left off doing. And from there, she really discovers that she has these powers, that she is not quite sure where they're coming from, and she is mortal and her dad is like her adopted father. And so she is so confused about where these different things that are happening to her are coming from and why she has different colored eyes. So she meets this guy who is a part of the royal family. And let me just tell you, I, I don't have words. I don't have words. Just read it. Just read it. If you want passion, if you want, oh, just read it. Okay. The next book. I read was Becoming Elizabeth Elliot. Now, I did not rate this book because I don't rate memoirs. And this was a autobiography, so someone else told it. And um, I 
At first really wasn't liking this book, but I will tell you by the end, I really was enjoying my experience and I think it was really just that God was speaking to me through it. But otherwise, I don't love the belief systems and the doctrine that Elizabeth Elliot follows. I just don't necessarily agree with the fact that we're supposed to just suffer and bear it. I believe that the Lord is a good God and that he loves us and that he wants us to be happy. Do I think that we go through trials? Yes, I do. But I think that the Lord carries us through it and ultimately wants us to be happy and blessed. And so I just don't love everything that she stands for. But what I did appreciate was her passion for just doing whatever it took to spread the gospel. Like she wanted to be obedient. She wanted to carry out what God had for her. It didn't matter what got in the way. She was out there to serve the Lord and no one else. And that does shine through in Elizabeth Elliot's story and Jim Elliot's story as well. So I do think that I'm glad I read it. I feel that I learned a lot and I also feel challenged in my faith. It really just helps me to dig deeper into what I believe and why I believe it. I feel reaffirmed in that. And so I just say, if you are going to read it, go in it knowing that, that Jesus loves you, that he wants the best for you and not to feel like that suffering is the goal and that suffering is what we should expect in our day-to-day -day Christian walk because that's just not it. Jesus loves you and he wants the best for you and his plans are good and he has a hope and a future for you. And while we will go through trials, we will go through suffering, he will be there with us through it all and carry us out of it. And he has scriptures and promises to cling to and speak over ourselves in our situations during those trials. And so I encourage you to go in it knowing that not everything someone says is exactly the correct way we should believe. But it is an inspiring story, and I actually think that if you want to read about Elizabeth Elliot's story, I think you should pick up one of her books because there is some hearsay that this author didn't really like the Elliots, and it kind of comes across in some of her writing and it kind of depicts them in a negative light. So I would encourage you to read some other books on Elizabeth Elliot written by her instead first because I don't want that to give you guys a negative outlook. So the next book that I read was Mayhem at the Orient Express. This was another cozy mystery that I just thought was good. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was just good. I didn't think it was very funny. I was kind of just getting bored and I don't know if it was just a me issue. I think that it was. I don't know. I had trouble focusing as I was reading it and I can't really tell you a lot about it other than it would be best if you read Murder at the Orient Express by Agatha Christie first so that nothing is spoiled for you in this book if you're planning on reading that. And this basically follows a group of women who have a book club and they are reading Murder at the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. And of course, a murder happens. And so they all are different characters that don't really get along and they have to really come together and learn to work through all of that drama. So it is a nice premise. I think it was still a good story. I just don't know if I was in the right mindset for it. The next book is No Good Tea Goes Unpunished. And this book did not disappoint. I do think that it's not as good as the first, but I still gave this four stars. I still really enjoyed it. I still love the story. I still love Everly. She's my favorite cozy mystery character so far. And I just love, 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 love. Grady. Grady is just my favorite cop in all the cozy mysteries I've ever read. The banter between him and Everly, if you know, you know, unmatched. It is why I eat this book up. It is why I eat these cozy mysteries up. They are why I love these cozy mysteries. <laughs> and then also it is a perfect beach read if you are going to the beach or you're still wanting a summer vibe. It takes place at the Outer Bank, so it is perfect for that. The next book that I read, which I don't have with me anymore, is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is my first Taylor Jenkins Reid, and I was so surprised. 
I was so surprised because as you all know, literary fiction is not my favorite genre. Most times I hate it. I went into it a little nervous and apprehensive. I listened to it fully on audiobook on the way to the beach. At first I wasn't even sure if I liked it. I wasn't sure if I was enjoying it. I was like, I don't know if this is gonna be for me. But as I'm reading it, I'm becoming really invested in these characters' stories. And the more I get into it, the more I wanna know what's gonna happen to each of these people, these characters that I feel like you grow to really just become invested in and to really love and to root for. And they just go through ups and downs and she is so good at writing characters. By the end, I was like, wow, that was genius. That was my exact thought. When I finished that book, I thought, wow, that was impeccable writing. I was so shocked. I couldn't believe where it was headed, that she had that in mind probably the whole time as she was writing the story and how she wove it all together at the end with all the characters. I was just so surprised that I ended up loving it. I did. I loved it so much. I don't think that I could read a character driven book like this all the time. I think I would get really tired of that because I do typically want plot in my books, but it hit me at the right time. It was just really well done. Probably the best literary fiction book I have read to date. And I just encourage you to try her out because I think she's really good at what she does. So maybe I just haven't liked literary fiction because I haven't read the greatest ones. I will say though, I loved AJ Fickery. So then the next book I read was The Summer I Turned Pretty, which I did watch the show first. So I did already know what was going to happen, but I still love this book. I gave it four stars. I love the writing. I love the chapters are short. I love that it just is such a quick read. I love that there's also emotion packed in it. It is a great YA romance, a great beach read because it's so easy to get through and light and I just loved it. Loved it just as much as the show. It's very true to the show so it's a great adaption and I think that if you want to just watch the show that's probably fine but if you're wanting to like if you're nervous about watching the show because you're not sure if the book is true to it, it, it really was. Like almost everything I read was just like it. And that wraps up all of the books that I read for July. I almost, almost finished First Lie Wins, which was Leah's pick for me, and I didn't get to it. I did, however, finish Gwen's pick for me, but I did not finish it until August. So you're gonna have to wait for the wrap up for that one. But let me just tell you, let me just tell you, it was a good time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Today, my inspiration is going to be that I encourage you to try to take off weekends with no social media. Try to take the time to just focus on family. We were talking about this a little bit on Leah Sprint last night and one of my good friends, Gwen, has been taking weekends off of social media during the summer and it has really inspired me and so I have decided that I wanna start trying to do that, obviously, except when I have an event scheduled like a sprint or whatever. And so this past weekend, that is what we mostly did. And I really just had such a great time. I had so much enriching time with my family. And I think that it is so needed, especially today. We are also glued to our phones. We are also glued to TV, electronics. We always have to have something. We always have to be checking. So. I encourage you to try to take this weekend off and just focus on family and have no electronics and see how that goes for you and see what you learn about the people that are around you and just unplugging and how much peace it truly brings you. So that is my inspiration for today. And I hope that you guys can truly strive to put your family first because it is so, so important. That wraps up my July reads and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys find a book that you really love off this list that you can read. Thank you guys for watching and remember to read what inspires you. Bye guys.